My next guest is an interesting character indeed. In fact, he was when he was young, his mum told him he'd either be very successful or in jail. He is a success, but he also went to jail. He's now the general manager of One Big Kitchen. It wasn't always that way. He has explained in his new book called Inside Out, and he's joining me now in the studio. Greg Fisher, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. A very interesting life you've had, to say the least. You were married with children after coming out and leaving your wife, though. You were eventually jailed for corporate fraud. You became a drug dealer. Uh, you went to jail for eight years and ended up sharing a cell with some of Australia's most notorious prisoners. Now, that is a very short snapshot. Um, this book, I, I have to say, I haven't read, but I'm very interested to. Um, I first want to ask you about coming out as a gay person after being married um, with children. And in the context of this current debate, how difficult is it when you you don't think uh, your expectations meet that of society or, or your friends, your community. Is that what you felt? Oh, very much so. I mean, look, I was brought up in the eastern suburbs of Sydney in a Jewish home. And of course, there was a great expectation to be married. Uh, and I wanted that life. I wanted the typical Jewish lifestyle. I wanted the picket fence. I wanted the children and so on. And as much as the expectation was on me, I think it was also on myself. However, I always struggled with it. From a very young age, I did know that I was gay. Before I was married, my ex-wife knew that I was gay. We still are good friends today. Um, and so I did struggle with it uh, greatly. Um, uh, but finally, at the age of 30, after I'd been married for five years and we had a daughter, I just decided, you know what, we have to make a decision to be happy and to be truthful, and, and I made that tough decision. And it wasn't a very rough, a smooth road from then on in. You became an ice addict, a highly functioning one, as I understand it. Um, and then you, your assets were frozen, you fell into drug dealing. Uh, there's a, a debate going on at the moment about ice and how dangerous it is. What's your perspective on it? There's absolutely no doubt that uh, ice is the scourge of the community. And if there's any regret that I have in my life, it's the day that I tried ice for the first time. It was instantly addictive. The whoosh effect that you have, uh, the instant uh, gratification and everything associated with it is something that's incredibly addictive. Um, and from that moment, my life spiraled out of control. Uh, the, you talk about my corporate days and so on, the ice happened well and truly after my corporate days. Uh, we always think there is a, a typical drug dealer or a trip, typical drug taker. We all, all see them in our minds and how they dress and how they look. But that is not really the face of ice, as you understand it, is it? It's not the face of any drug, Laura. I mean, the fact is that uh, drugs cut across a great range in our community at all levels, uh, at all demographics. And, uh, but ice, once you, you touch ice, you go downhill regardless of where you come from. And what do you think, um, what's your perspective on, on drug legalisation or um, the way ice should be managed? I mean, there's a task force going on at the moment, uh, but is it as bad as, you know, the community, the media would, would make out? Yes, it is. And I applaud the government for taking the initiative um, to, to delve further into the ice uh, epidemic and to uh, work with all levels, as they're doing, uh, to attack this problem. I mean, it's not an easy one. Legalisation, I think, would be a very big call. Um, and I, I, I certainly don't help a firm view on that. Mm. But I do hold the view that it is such a serious problem and people who do become ice addicts, need extensive help. I was fortunate. I was jailed. And as I explain in my book, I went from an addict to a non-addict non with the slam of a cell door. And I was fortunate. Had I not have happened, that, that not have happened, I probably would be dead. You do not see old ice addicts around. And that's because the damaging effects of those of ice is beyond any other drug. You have turned your life around though. You're now the general manager of Our Big Kitchen. This is a successful community uh, kitchen. Do you see others, you know, the way you were back then and do you know how to help them? Well, look, it's ten and a half years since I even looked at a drug. Um, eight of those were in jail and since then I've been the general manager of Our Big Kitchen in Bondi. Uh, that's a, an organisation that every single day helps people in need. Uh, now my job is mentoring other people, making sure that they do take the right uh, decisions in life. I work still every day with inmates. I have inmates employed. 
I have ex-inmates employed and every single day I work with them. The fact is that in the last six years at our big kitchen, every inmate who has completed the program with us that has stayed employed until they, they have been released from their jail time, not one of those uh, inmates has returned to jail. And that's in a system where two out of three do return. So the point is that positive um, reintegration through employment and through vocational opportunities is what is absolutely necessary. Well, Greg Fisher, congratulations on your book. Good luck with it. Thank you. I hear the hard work starts from now. Michael Kirby, does. Justice Michael Kirby, will be launching that book for you on Monday. Thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Thanks, Greg.